Hello? Hey, all right. I got hey, and to the rest of the world, welcome to What Is That? Radio Show with the Mountain Man, Spike Farm Shadow. <laughs> and Russell Hamilton. And joining us today will be our special guest, Andrew Sosa. Our so, official fourth member of the O What Is That team for our Sundays with Sosa that's going to actually be on Sunday. Hell yeah, son. There we go. All right, so let me, uh, it's funny you say that because it's actually midnight, so it's technically Monday now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we tried, son, we tried. Yeah, we almost made it. Let me murder the car real quick. All righty. All right, Sosa, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. All right. Hell yeah, I can hear you guys amazingly. Yeah, it really does sound a lot clearer. Hell yeah, it does. And especially when we get done with the podcast, I'm going to download the podcast and I'm going to clean up the audio. I'm going to boost the volume so that everybody can be be heard better. And uh, this podcast is going to sound pretty bitching when I post it later on. So, <laughs> so it should take me about an hour once we're all, you know, once I download it and fix it and post it. So, sweet. So I'm what glad we'll be able today? to get it out. Huh? I said, how the hell are you doing, brother? Me? I was just yeah, making yeah. sure you weren't talking to me. You're always yeah. talking to Russell, so it's probably me. I'm yeah. good, man. How are y'all doing? <laughs> I'm doing fucking fantastic, man. Do you realize that not last night's podcast, but the night before, we're up to 376 listeners, son. We had 376. Russell was just telling me about that. And then last night's podcast, one of them's up to 165, and then the other one's up to 150. So Sweet. So big shout out to Will, our official third member, and thank you so much to Sosa and all our listeners out there for supporting us and helping take what is that to the next level. I can't thank you all enough. Well, what I'm going to start doing now, too, I, I, I should have thought about this beforehand, but what I'm going to start doing is I'm just going to start tagging people whenever I share the post to the groups. I'm going to start tagging people in the post so that they're much more inclined to listen to it rather than, than it just it come across their news feed. I think that will help, too. Hell, yeah. That's so, a great idea. I don't, I don't know why I wasn't doing that already, but, you know, <laughs> my bad. <laughs> hey, hey man, we're all learning, man. Hey, we're all learning. We're all getting this shit straight, man. It's good. It's an exciting time. We're growing here. What is that? We're branching out. We're doing big things. So, Yes, sir. Hell, yeah. <laughs> So now, and you, you do, oh, it's okay, go. go ahead. I was just going to ask Russell how he was doing. <laughs> I'm doing good now that I want work. <laughs> yeah, we were waiting on you. I was waiting patiently in the parking lot, like, like, he's going to get off soon. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. I had to, I, w I worked late, later than I was scheduled, and then I had to go to Walmart because I had no food and I had to eat all day. So I'm eating like these muffins now, and everything's good, so... <laughs> Oh, well, you're off now, so it's all good. Hell yeah. Exactly. Now, speaking of good things. Yeah. Yes. It's a Dragon Ball. Yes! <laughs> this episode was great. Like, I don't have to start off this one. I'll let, you, I'll let one of y'all go first if y'all want to. But oh, oh, I, I love the interaction, man. It was priceless. Yeah. Y you know, I like this episode because it, it did a really, it was dialogue heavy. And it did a really good job of moving the plot forward, where some episodes, they don't, they just kind of focus on, like, one thing and kind of, you know, it's usually really good, like an epic fight or something, but, you know, this episode, it dealt with a lot of things, and it showed the progression of characters and what everyone was doing and what they're planning and how they're reacting to the situations that's going on around them, and I, thought, I just thought that was really cool. Yes, sir. It is, like, it is like every episode that we get moving forward, getting closer and closer to the tournament actually starting, like, things are heating up, the plot is heating up, we're getting so much character development, not only from Universe 7 and all their people, but from these different universes, we're seeing more and more of their personalities and their characters developing. And, and so... 
Like, th this episode, was, there was just so much going on, and I absolutely loved it. Hell yeah. I, I absolutely, sorry, I absolutely loved uh, the interactions between Goku and Frieza when he's first resurrected, when they're the play-punching each other. I was yeah. like, they don't like each other, but they have mad respect for each other, it seems, down on the levels of power and fighters. Like, even two people who hate each other's guts will usually come together whenever they go all out in a battle. Like, we see in the USC all the time. They've been talking so much smack beforehand, even though none of them have killed their best friends. You know? Exactly. You know, they still respect each other's power and what they're going to be contributing towards the universe's uh, uh, survival. And I just love the interaction, especially when Frieza was the first one to do it. And, and the Goku, you know... He doesn't, he like gives no fucks about anything bad that's ever happened. He just cares about the fact that he's getting another sparring partner who's going to help him win the Universal Tournament. <laughs> and he doesn't even care. Oh, you killed my best friend and you killed so many other people so many times. Ha <laughs> ha, you play jab me right back. Oh, you're, a, you're an awesome bro. Like, like, he was, he was friends. Frieza was doing it because he, he wanted to get as much vicarious satisfaction into killing him as he could, you know, because he couldn't kill him just yet. <laughs> and Goku was just like, I like it, yeah, let's do it, yeah, we're bros, we're cool, fist bump. <laughs> Mike, what the fuck is wrong with you? See, this well, is, you don't hold grudges, you don't, you don't, this is, this is, this is like, like, thing that has been going on with Dragon Ball for the longest time that people have missed, okay, listen, okay, Goku doesn't kill the villains because he's got some um, higher moral authority, or because he's a good guy. Nah, son, nah, son. It's some deep, selfish-seated, like, I need to keep these people around to keep me strong, and so I've got sparring partners, seriously. We've exposed you, Goku. You ain't as innocent <laughs> as you lead yourself to be, son. Yeah, yeah. I'm not as innocent as, as the, the English dub makes it out to be. <laughs> exactly. Of, for real, the English dub, you know, they have to Americanize it for, for it to be popular among us American fans, but hey, <laughs> they really go overboard with it. <laughs> like, Speaking of which, I have a question, just that it's, it's on the same topic, but it's just a little bit of a side topic. <laughs> I've noticed one thing that Goku's never done before, and the reason I'm asking this is because this was an actual debate. He, Goku is lying to everybody now. And, that, and it's pretty sucky of him to do that to his teammates. We elaborated on that the last time. Yeah. But um, he's lying to everybody now, and kind of everyone's starting to follow suit, even Vegeta a little bit, you know, you know, which he hates himself for doing, thank God. But do you all believe it's a sin or morally wrong to lie to people if it's for their own benefit, even if it's not in the best way, if it's good intention and it's for the benefit of, like, humankind or the pe certain people. Do y'all believe it's still wrong then, or it's like a, a parent lying to their child about never having done, you know, never having tried crack or, you know, never having tried ecstasy or anything like that? You don't want to tell them that it's okay by saying, you know, oh, yeah, I've, I've done it before, and look, I turned out okay. You know, that kind of thing. Do y'all think that's morally wrong or... or uh, because I was having I was having a debate about Ghost Rider and about whether his soul his you know soul stare would work his penance stare <laughs> and whether yeah. Goku has sinned or not. So we were like, I wonder if that's wrong. I wanted to get your thoughts on that. Um, as far as the Ghost question, Rider thing, uh, uh, the, the penance stare seems to use like ev like people's guilt and and like the wrongdoings that they've known they've done wrong. Goku is ignorant, so. Yep. Some of the things he does wrong, like, he's just oblivious to. So it might not work on him simply because of that. But as far as, like, morals go, morally it is wrong to lie to people. But it, people tell little white lies all day, every day, just to, you know, for the benefit of the person they're lying to. Parents do it every day, like Vegeta, when he was like, oh yeah, Frieza, he turned over a new leaf, don't worry. He doesn't want Trunks to, to be thinking about, oh, we're going to go fight in this tournament, and it's such a big deal that we had to bring back the most evil villain that ever lived, 
just so our universe might not get erased. Like, you don't want to tell your, like, eight-year-old son that. Like, Why not? You know what I'm saying? So... Uh, I, I don't understand. I don't get that. Um, here's my thing. Uh, one of the, I'm going to say this first. I think that's one of the best questions, uh, like, I've heard in a hell of a long time, Andrew. I think that's fucking brilliant, son. Um, <laughs> I really do, because I, I, I think it, it really summarizes and it really gets to the core as to what Goku's doing now and, and where the, sh the show is going and everything. And first of all, I'm going to say this. I don't lie to my daughter, okay? So, you know, some parents do that. They lie to their kids. I don't, okay? I've been straight up with my daughter since day one, and I will be that way till the day I die. Maybe it's because I was lied to so much as a kid that I fucking hate lying to kids, yeah. okay? And I think that they're a hell of a lot smarter than we give them credit for. And I think so true. That they can they can handle the truth a hell of a lot better if we just tell it to them. So, first of all, um, I think that what what Vegeta is doing with Trunks, I think it's fucked up. I think it's wrong. I think you should just tell them straight up. Number two. Like, what Goku's doing by lying to everybody, I think it's fucked up. I really, really do. Okay? We're talking about the end of the universe here. And I get it. I get where Goku's coming from. He's worried because people won't sign on. But you can't do that to people. Because when you lie to people, you take away their ability to assess the situations correctly with the truthful knowledge and the truth of the story that they need to correctly problem solve that situation. And you take that right away from them. So, number one, I think it's fucked up. Number two, I think it is morally wrong. And number three, I don't think that, I agree with Russell that I think that if Ghost Rider did this penance stare on Goku, I don't think it would have any effect on Goku because I don't think what, that Goku thinks what he's doing is wrong. Right. Well, see, that also goes on to which comic store you're using because some indenta in, uh, indentations of, you know, Ghost Rider, you know, it's any sin no matter what, you know, so then you have to determine what's really a sin. And sometimes it's just about what they're guilty about, what, what evil actually done. It depends on which one you're doing. But, like, if we're talking, like, black and white, is it morally wrong? Is it a sin to lie ever? Like, you know, let's say, you know, you know, both parents love one child, you know, and they, they absolutely, both are great co-parents, but, you know, you don't want to tell your child, you know, that you're, you're the, you know, makings of a bad one-night stand, you know, even if they both love them. You know, or certain things like, you know, like uh, parents and, you know, what happened to someone's parents whenever they uh, someone else adopted them? There's so many different things that you could try to lie to someone or to like children for their benefit, so they don't feel bad about anything. But is lying wrong under any circumstance, no matter what? Or there's sometimes I would, okay. I would say lying is wrong under most certain, like ninety to ninety-five percent of the time, lying is wrong. There are certain times where I could understand why you would lie. Like, like Vegeta lying to Trunks, I kind of get it because even, let's say he told Trunks the truth. He's like, yeah, you know, there's a universe tournament. We might all be erased from existence, you know, never to live again. If, you know, all the pressure's on us and we had to get this evil dude to break life. What is Trunks going to be able to do with that? Absolutely nothing. All that's going to do is put fear into his head he, he's not powerful enough to make a difference. He's not, he's not ex grown enough or experienced enough to try to help in any kind of way. There's literally nothing he could do but sit and worry about it. Yeah. And we all know Trunks is a badass, but at the same time, he still is just a kid. So I understand why Vegeta lied to him. If Vegeta told him the truth, I would also respect that as well. So that's one of those situations where it could go either way. So, Vegeta, I understand. Goku, on the other hand, he's talking to, he's lying to grown-ass people who are fully capable of making their own decisions. Like, how are you going to lie to somebody like Android 18, Krillin, Android 17, about what this tournament's really about? 
Yeah, we talked about that last time. I agree with you 100%. Yeah, he totally should have told him the truth on that. He's retarded for lying. That's, yeah. that's my opinion. Vegeta, I can understand his situation, but Goku, not so much. Yeah, that's, that's a hard argument to, to press because it can go either way whenever you're trying to discuss whether whether the penance there would work on them or not. <laughs> that's a hard argument. I, I think that the penance there was originally designed for rapists, murderers, like people that do fucked up shit, okay? And granted, okay, lying is a sin, and I, and I, you know, I 100% believe that lying is wrong, but I believe that whenever Ghost Rider has used the penance stare, and especially the implications of what the penance stare does to the occupant or the person that's receiving it, usually they get fucking hollowed out by coal and fire and fucking brimstone and shit. Now... Someone who, who's doing white lies, now keep in mind, I think it's wrong, but at the same time, if you're doing white lies, I don't think that you should be affected by the penance stare, I'm just saying. But I agree you, with you. You tell little white lies every day. Like somebody says, hey, how are you? You're having a shitty day, but you say, oh, I'm great. How are you? Yeah, that's a great point. Yeah, that's, that's a really a, good point a, right that's there. That's a lie. That's a little white lie. Why yeah, you I should have so me? used that. I never even thought about that. <laughs> Yeah, uh, no, why, why do you lie? Because no one really gives a shit. That's just proper greeting. Right, it's, society would crumble if we didn't use white, white lies. <laughs> I, you know, the thing is, it's like when people ask me, how am I doing, and, and I'm not having a good day, I'm going to say, hey, man, I'm having a shitty day. How about you? Well, see, I'll do that, too. <laughs> but, like, but, it, but like, it, a, like a, such a foreign concept to me that for some reasons it's always just socially accepted. And ever since I was a kid, and now I'm 32, I, and I've been all over this fucking world of ours, and I am still dumbfounded to this day why white lies are accepted amongst when we can't just be just honest with each other. I'm going to tell you the answer to that question. Okay, like in, in the instance of like a greeting, okay? Hey, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Nobody in that situation who's saying, hey, how are you? Neither one of them gives a fuck about how the other person's feeling. Not, not uh, one little bit. You walk up to the store, and you, ask the, you tell the store clerk, hey, how are you? And he's like, oh, I'm doing good. How are you? I'm good. Here's my thing. Check me out. Take my money. I'm leaving. Like, you're not, you're not there to have a conversation with him. You're just there to buy shit. And you greet him, and you say, hey, how are you, just to be polite. But in reality, you don't really give a shit how his day is going because you're only going to see him for five seconds and you got shit to do. Like, you don't know this guy. It doesn't really matter what he thinks or what he thinks well, of you. Well, I, yeah, I, I, I still don't understand that. Because if ever I come up to somebody, I'm like, hey, how you doing? Like, I truly mean it. Like, hey, how you doing? You know? Like, you know, I, I mean, I'm not to the point where, like, I, I'm going to, you know, stand there and well, talk with you for about three this. hours. But well, exactly. It, 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 like, and, and when you, oh, when you, when somebody says, hey, how are you doing? And the guy's like, oh, man, I'm not doing so good today. Like, that opens the door for a conversation that people don't want to have. So it's like, by you saying, oh, I'm not doing so good today. Oh, you know, they're like, oh, well, what's wrong? Oh, my dog died, and uh, my paycheck was short, and uh, this bullshit happened, and this whatever. And the guy's like, I didn't want to hear all that. I just wanted to, you know, buy a pack of cigarettes and leave. But now I'm stuck <laughs> talking about how this. Now I'm stuck talking about this guy's shitty day, and it's bringing me down. Well, then you shouldn't. You shouldn't open the door. Don't open the door <laughs> if you don't expect people to walk through it. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe I'm. Just, maybe I'm just a fucking alien, <laughs> and I've been like that. Like. 99% of my life. Y'all are both 100% right. Y'all are both absolutely correct. There's, there's like these weird social norms that we do as people that I still to this day, like, I mean, yeah, you can explain it to me, but uh, like on a deep emotional psychological level, I'm like, huh? Well, a lot of times people ask me, like, I don't ask them how they're doing, but they always want to ask me how I'm doing. And I always say I'm doing good, even if I'm not, simply because I don't feel like, because if I, if I say, oh, 
I'm not doing so good. Then they're going to ask why, and I don't want to talk about it. So I just say I'm doing good, and they move on their merry way. And now I don't have to talk why, about it. Why don't you want to talk about it? Because I got shit to do. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know that, Spike. <laughs> uh, yeah, I get, I get that, but... Well, y'all are both 100% right. There is no right and wrong in this one. Y'all are both 100% yeah. right. I mean, like, believe it or not, I, I actually agree with Russell, like, a, a lot on this topic. That being said, I'm exactly like you, Spike. If someone asks me, I'll be up front. But I, I actually got, not in trouble, but I got reprimanded at work one time and just told not to do that because I would be at work and they would ask me how I'm doing and I'm, I'm at Waffle House, you know, cooking stuff. And I'd be telling them, you know, in general, be like, what's wrong with me? And now my day's actually going. And then my manager came up to me, like, people don't want to really know how you're doing. Just say you're good and just leave it at that, Andrew. You know, they don't really want to know. So I was told by my work to lie. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I agree with you, Spike. I agree with you, Spike. If you, if some, if you don't want to have that conversation, you shouldn't ask. Don't ask somebody how they're doing if you don't care. I live by that. I don't ever ask anybody how they're doing if I don't want to know. But but I can't stop people from asking me how I'm doing, and I don't want to talk about my shitty day. So I just tell them I'm doing good, so I don't have to talk about my shitty day. <laughs> now, now, see, now granted, okay, with all that being said, there are times when people will come up to me and they'll ask me how I'm doing, and I'll just ignore them. <laughs> and, and I feel it's pretty self-evident that if I'm ignoring you, it's because I don't want to talk to you. Or you could, you could dodge the question. Somebody could be like, hey, how are you? And you could just ignore that part of it. You just like, it's because you like, I'm hey. not <laughs> affected by social awkwardness like most people are. See, most people are, like, here's a great example, right? If you're in an elevator, right? Okay. <laughs> you, know, you guys know what it's like to be in an elevator and there's people in the elevator, you know? Or, or you're standing at a spot waiting in line or something like that and just people talk to you because they're so afraid of social awkwardness or, or silence or whatever. Me, I'm not that way. I don't care. I don't care about, I'm not just going to have a conversation with you so that there's no empty space, okay? If I want to legitimately have a conversation with you or I'm open to a conversation, then I'll start a conversation. Hey, what's good, son? How the hell you do? You know, but if I don't want to talk to you, I'm going to ignore you. Yeah, it's just I think what Spike was mainly elaborating on Russell is is the sad fact that white lies have become commonplace and accepted in society. And even though that's how it is under the liberal idea, it's not how it should be. <laughs> Right, it makes like, sense. It, it, I mean, it's politically it, 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 correct to, 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 to tell white lies to people just to not hurt their feelings, too. Like, that's a big thing in our society is everybody lies to everybody afraid of offending them. So instead of telling them the truth, yeah. to lie to them to save them from having their feelings hurt. Right. But you see that, how that, that one little white lie, that series of white lies, leads to you know, a second stage, as I call it, of lies. And then they're even bigger lies. And then before you know it, we live in an entire society that's built, constructed, lived by, and functioning by those lies that were started in the first place. Because and then we get Donald like, Trump. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's just a little white lie. It's just a little lie here and there. But then that little lie here and there adds up to a whole fucking ton of lies. And then you have this big house of cards of lies, and then it completely crumbles when somebody finally exposes the truth. Yeah. And it's then Trump gets, because gets impeached. When I'm <laughs> <laughs> and I've actually, I've noticed that, like, the people, like, my good friends, and, like, people that I've become close with over the years or whatever, when I talk to them, I don't ever ask them how they're doing. I, just, I, I don't greet them at all. I just jump straight in the conversation. Like, mm. and Spike will tell you, I do this all the time. And, like, I'll, I'll be, instead of, when I enter the phone, instead of saying hello, I was like, hey, did I ever tell you about that time I was on the baseball team and this douchebag uh, <laughs> stole my shoe or whatever? Like... I just jump into a story. Like, I don't even say hello. <laughs> like, whenever I call him or he calls me, I'm always like, what is good, bro? Like, that's how I start the conversation. 
Like, what's good with you? What's going on with you? What? Because I'm, I'm naturally invested and naturally considerate about what's going on in your world. Like, what's going on, man? Because I look at people's lives as, hey, how can I help make your life better? Even though I'm an asshole, okay, and I, <laughs> I, 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 I ain't going to try to sugarcoat that. But at the same time, I may be a big asshole, but I've got an even bigger heart. And it's when people abuse that, that that's when you get the fucking bull, son. That's when you get the bull, bitch, and you get the fucking horns, okay? Spike is reading my life story right now, just, you know. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Because I can be your bestest friend, I can be there till the fucking wheels fall off, son, or we can be bitter rivals, or we can be bitter enemies. Exactly. I would rather be, I'd rather be your bestest friend in the whole fucking world and have your back no matter fucking what, but which side of me you get depends on you, son. Yeah, for real. Like, like, I'll give y'all a perfect example. This is going to blow y'all's mind. Y'all are probably going to think less of me in a playful way after this. But, like, I am the biggest hopeless romantic in the whole freaking world, but I fucking hate women at the same time. <laughs> you know, you get that. You, 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 <laughs> you, <laughs> I really am. You want to know what my top, th one of my top three favorite series of all time is in the movie franchise? All, my top three of all time in anything, way, shape, or form. I fucking love the Twilight series. I fucking love it. It is fucking awesome. My ex-wife introduced it to me, and I've been hooked on ever since. I fucking, I'm fucking Edward personality-wise all over it, but then you get the other side of me in everyday life on Facebook when I'm dissing feminists and everything, I'm the Jacob guy. But at, at heart, I'm really like Edward, you know, just ride or die, you know, hopelessly romantic no matter what, 100 years ago, old school, you know, gentleman style. <laughs> it just depends on which one you want, how you... How you how you go about it, if you're an ultra-romantic with me, I'll be it right back. But if you're like one of these little conniving little feminist bitches nowadays, this privilege, no, mm -mm, you ain't gonna get that. <laughs> yeah, exactly, bitch, you're gonna get the fucking horn. And I'll comment that kind of stuff. I'm like, yeah, I'm a hopeless romantic, and all the girls on my Facebook are like, are you fucking kidding me? No, the fuck you're not. I'm like, you just don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's because real men have hearts. Okay, and see, most women don't get to see the the big hearts that we have because it's buried underneath tons of fucking steel, fucking plated armor shit, son. And, and, and we got, because these women will to fucking take advantage of that shit. So it's like we got to keep that part of our personality away from them because uh, they'll try to take advantage of that shit. And it's like, nah, bitch, nah, hey, I'm not new to the game. This isn't my first rodeo. This isn't my first trip. Okay. So you gotta you gotta have like a fucking locksmith or like a fucking lock and key or you gotta be some fucking like Houdini artist to get through all that <laughs> like wreckage and construction and shit. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Just saying. Nah, but <laughs> it, it's true though. I mean, I hey, I, I just have to say I love Twilight so much that I went and bought the early Blu-ray edition release of the whole five pack when it came out. I mean. <laughs> I ain't never done that for any other series, really. Uh, <laughs> Have y'all actually watched yeah, it? It's good. I watched yeah. When the movie first came <laughs> out, um, <laughs> you know, Spike is an even bigger asshole than me. He's like, no, no, no. Ew. I mean, unfortunately, <laughs> I've watched it, unfortunately. And that's I why you hate it. I've watched the first two. I've seen the, first, I've seen the Twilight and then the New Moon because my, my sister forced me to watch it. And Number then after two that, I was like, bomb. please no more. <laughs> please no more. <laughs> <laughs> no, number two is yeah. a bomb because you know how Bella's so depressed afterwards? When yeah. I got that movie on DVD, because she introduced me to the first movie, and I liked it after that because it reminded me so much of my inner self. And then number two came out on DVD. We got it, and around that same time, she, she, uh, she broke up with me and started the divorce proceedings and moved out and started all that police bullshit of her false accusations and everything. So after that, I was just like Bella, and I would just sit there in my own depression for like two months straight, just watching that movie over and over, just killing myself 
until I finally said I had enough, but <laughs> I've well, been hooked yeah. ever since. <laughs> I'm the same way sometimes. Like, when I'm in a sad mood, when I'm, like, sad, I always listen to sad music, and it just makes it worse, but I want to listen to sad music because it's, like, the only thing I'm in the mood to listen to. <laughs> yeah, I, a lot of men are like that. We have to go through a couple weeks, maybe a month or two, of just the worst suicidal depression possible, and then we finally get over it. We just wake up one day and we're like, okay, I've, that's enough. Time to make life good again, you know, if we haven't killed ourselves by then. <laughs> well, it's, it's just, I, like the, I like the fact that you decide, okay, that's about enough now. It's time to pull myself up and make shit happen again. Because yeah. that is possible to do. And it takes a lot of effort, but it is so possible to do. And, like, people today will have you believe that it's impossible like, once you're in depression, it's just a lifelong prison you'll never escape from, and you need medicine for the rest of your life, and you need to be diagnosed with all of these things and, and be taken care of your whole life. But that's not true, because you and only you have the power to free yourself from that. Agreed. Uh, and I just and, went and, through and, this and, one and girl. At the same time, and at the same time, you have to feel that emotion. Once you feel it, then you can overcome it. But you can't overcome something until you feel it. Right. Hey, once it's there, hey, I'm depressed, I'm sad, whatever, this shit sucks. And, and you deal with it and you experience that emotion. You have to experience that emotion in its rawest form. And then after that, then you can defeat it. Then you can overcome it. It's like a villain in Dragon Ball, okay? <laughs> you, you gotta, you gotta, uh, and you have to get your ass kicked for a little while. <laughs> Exactly. exactly. So you can get that new transformation. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we go yeah, Super Saiyan after the breakup. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and then you when get your ass whooped, and, and, and you gotta, you, you know, like Goku did during the Frieza saga, you gotta chill in the incubation chamber for a minute. And then, you know, come out and go fucking KO Ken and fucking whoop Freeze's ass and then lose someone close to you and then fucking that just pushes you over the edge to go fucking Super Saiyan Son and fucking whoop Freeze's punk ass. And now we're 50 <laughs> times stronger and then the ex just looks back at like, fuck, I miss him now. He's 50 times better than <laughs> Nah, bitch, no more. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. <laughs> mm -mm. I hate yeah, it whenever no, girls no. try to make it seem like they're the ones who go through the big depression phase first. It's a psychological fact that most of the time yeah. guys are the ones that are at suicide's door whenever well, the yeah, breakup yeah. first happens. Men, you know, but men make up the majority of suicides in, in the world. Uh, yeah, but just like in general... The difference between men and women is women deal with depression by talking to each other. They always want to talk about it. Whereas men, when we get depressed, we stick to ourselves. Okay, yeah. and we don't talk, we shut everybody out and we're like, listen, this is just something I got to deal with on my own. I got to battle my demons by myself. I don't want to drag anybody down with me. It's just me. Leave me alone. Whereas women, yeah. a lot of times, they'll, you know, they want to call up their girlfriends and, and, and tell their boyfriend all about it. And they talk about their feelings. And, that, and that's how they cope. And that's how they can, you know, get over things. Whereas, man, that doesn't help us. That just makes it worse. Yeah, I can. Exactly. Yeah, so, I was elaborating uh, more on the... Uh, uh, I'm going to take the this. Psychological. Yeah, okay, I, I, well, I, I, go, I knew, yeah, I knew you were going to that, yeah. Well, I, w I was just elaborating with the fact that I hate it when women try to make it seem like they're the ones that usually, usually, not all the time, but usually go through the big depression phase first and they end up yeah. being happier later. No, that's actually what... Psychological fact, what the guys normally do. We're usually the ones depressed in the beginning, and then we realize that we're better off without them, and we're happier now, and then the girl misses us. That's how it usually goes, but women, to try to make them feel better about their own selves and make themselves feel better about how they fucked up the relationship, you know, try to make it seem like they're the ones who are depressed, and they're the ones who are going to be better off in the end. When that's like, actually not like that. That's why all these bitches go crazy later. <laughs> Exactly, because when a man breaks up with a woman, we go through this whole deep depression, dark phase, but then we we come out of it and we, you know, we get move on to better things. Where women, they're fine at first, you know, and then... They go and fuck 10 other dudes, you know. Yep, yep, 
And then if <laughs> after they fuck those ten other dudes and they're left alone afterwards, and because none of these guys give a fuck about them, that that's when they're like, man, I really fucked up. And then that's when they start to go through their psychological downward spiral. It, it, By that time, we're, we're out of it. And we're like, hey, we're already uh, out fucking other bitches. Yeah, and they got an but, STD uh, and there's no going back. <laughs> yeah, exactly, bitch. Maybe you should have kept them legs closed. Oh, oh, damn. Hello, darkness, my old friend. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. It's so true. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, let's let's uh, let's let's shift gears a little bit here and get back to uh, this week's episode of Dragon Ball because I got tons of things to talk about. Yeah, yeah, of course. Number one. Number one. What's up with fucking Sidra and Catella's punk ass plotting to take out Frieza? Huh? Hey, they're scared. They know their they know their universe can't match up. Right, right. The, the, the Especially kind of Universe thing. Nine. I believe that Universe. Uh, what, what's the what's the Mouse One's Universe? Universe Four. Four. four? Yeah. yeah. Okay, I got that one right. I believe he is just playing Sidra like a fiddle. You know, he's just trying to you know manipulate things and get the more powerful Universe Seven out of his way without even being directly involved. But Sidra, I, I believe, is, he's just getting played um, because their universe is the worst and. Everyone hates Universe 7. You know, they want them to go. But, uh, I mean, I really think it's elaborating and kind of hinting towards the fact that maybe Universe 9 is going to get destroyed. I mean, it Well, you know, especially uh, if, if, like, this week has been crazy in terms of Dragon Ball news. Because earlier this week, we got this big reveal about episodes 90, or 94 through 98. And especially in these early spoilers that we got. It said that what's supposed to happen is Frieza is going to switch sides and he's going to fight for Universe 4. That's actually what's proven false, though. I was oh I was just gonna say that hasn't been proven proven to be false yet but actually it, it, it was as of uh as of a number of hours ago less than a day ago oh shit it, it it's pretty much been because I'm subscribed to both Herms and Geekdom 101 on Twitter now so anytime any fucking news drops now I'm like all over that shit like fucking uh, <laughs> flies on shit son well check Geekdom's late, latest video he he covers that. He basically goes on to say, I agree with him, that these were pretty much some of the best fakes ever made in Dragon Ball Z history. But they, Are but some of them were fake. Serious? Some of them were, were accurate, which is why it was able to sell. Some of them, yeah. some of them like universe, uh, like Frieza switching to another universe was false. Yeah. And to be honest, I didn't wow. think, I, I was hesitant to believe it in the first place. At best, I was going to think that it's not a good plot point because I don't think it's a good plot point for him to switch, switch over to another random universe he has no affiliation with. You know. Well, then yeah. how how is then what happens to Frieza then? Because so far he's sticking with Universe Seven. But it, I thought one of the things that was definitely confirmed was the fact that they are going to need a tenth member. Yeah, Frieza. That. Fr Oh, so, oh, okay. All right. And I'm glad uh, okay. it's happening okay. this way. I didn't. I, I want to see Frieza fighting on Universe 7's team. I agree. I don't Especially want, I don't want him to get up. destroyed or switch sides last minute and then go with Yamcha or some shit. Like, I want Frieza to fight for Universe 7. I want to see him fight Frog. Okay. okay. I want to see him All fight right. some of these Saiyans from Universe 6. Like, I want to see, I want to see that happen. It, it, that to okay. me, that to okay. me, I'm tracking now. Is the most interesting storyline that they could go down. Agreed. <laughs> yeah, Spike. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm here, man. I'm just, uh, I'm just processing all this now. Okay, good. It sounded like you were cracking up there for a second. My bad. Nah, man. I'm just, uh, my brain's just overloaded with all the craziness. So uh, I'm just processing all the changes that have that we learned about this week now that are changed, so it's just my brain's just catching up, son. I have no doubt that there's going to be some crazy twist involving Frieza, but there hasn't been anything officially confirmed yet. We thought there was, but it was fake. You know, so Damn, we're just waiting man. and seeing. Wow. 
That's got to be the biggest damn fucking hoax. That's got to be some of the bi- like the best damn fucking trickery fuckery that, that, that has ever happened to Dragon Ball, man. Wow. Well, it, someone had, uh, someone who made that had to have had the inside scoop and just made it on what some of the spoilers were and then just made up the other shit as he went along. That's what happened. Wow. Wow. You know, just for clickbait now, stuff. Oh, yeah, fuck ass, clickbait, fuck ass. <laughs> Man, I'm over here, like, thinking Freeze's gonna jump to Universe 4, we're gonna need a tenth member and all this fucking shit, now I'll come to find out this shit is false, ha ah! Yeah. If I find out who did this shit, I'm coming after you, son, and I'm gonna punch you right in your fucking mouth. Uh, well, you know, know that's probably, uh, yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> Well, you know that T.O., um, back in the Boo Saga, when it was first coming out many, many years ago, they actually released fake spoilers themselves just to trick people and get them even more hyped up later on. So you never know. They might be tricking uh, us again. Well, see, what kind of fucking low lives would do this type of shit? You people have been <laughs> sold, seriously. <laughs> like, see, now, they, see, these are the type of people that if uh, Ghost Rider put the penny stare on them, these fuckers would, like, burn to their court. <laughs> <laughs> these are the type of dangerous lives that can, that can screw people's homes, break up families, like, can tear the world apart. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. That, I... As soon as you said, these are the type of people, I said, I know where he's going, and I just immediately started laughing. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, uh, it just made perfect full circle, just like that, just perfect. I know, right? The circle of life, you know, Mufasa did, just boom. Exactly. <laughs> Dude, one thing that y'all have to remember, though, and a lot of people, and I actually w- was able to talk a little bit, Seth, I- I'm not saying that I gave him this idea, I'm just saying, I, I, you know, we talked about it, you know, uh, among a whole group of other people, you know, uh, is that Seth, the programmer, also confirmed this, too, in his video earlier today, and I was already along with him on the same note. Something that a lot of people have overlooked is that the fact that Freeze is dead. Y'all remember in the Boo Saga, Goku's body is twice as durable and a lot more stamina is afforded to his body whenever he's dead. Yo. Same is going to go to Frieza. His durability is already freaking insane. He can he can no sell a planet bus, you know, without any key in his body. You know, all that training. Now his golden form, his Lord knows, you know, where his durability is at now. Universal tier at the very least. Damn. But you also have to remember. What was his number one problem in his golden form? His stamina. He couldn't maintain it. He has at least two or three times the amount of stamina now just for having a halo over his head. Can you imagine the type of progress he's going to be able to make in his golden form now? That's going to be epic to see. Yeah, yeah. Yes, but at the same time, though, the more power that Frieza uses up, that's going to shorten his time for the tournament, though, correct? If he goes... Well, we don't know how much... I, I honestly believe the uh, the golden form is kind of is is the super saiyan of the freezer race. That's what it is. Okay. You know. Okay. That being said, he can master that form. You know, super saiyan three is the ultimate of the ultimate trunks ascended super saiyan ultimate inner power brought out. I don't believe the golden form is like that. I believe it's just the golden form, something that can be mastered, just like super saiyan for the saiyans is. You know, that's what I believe. So I don't believe it's going to shorten his his time span. You know, okay. maybe they'll use that as a plot point later. You never know, but I don't think it will. Well, because I'm thinking to myself, like, when Goku went Super Saiyan 3, like, he, you know, he just about burned up all his time. You well, know? it's because he, and I, your time and shortens when you, like, when you expel too much energy. Your time shortens. But if, if Frieza's form has, like, really good key control, he might be able to go around that. He might be able to lengthen his time. It might right. shorten it a little bit, but, I mean, not enough to where it would matter for the tournament, I don't think. Because even when even with Goku, um, even with Goku, you know, using all that power, he was still there for almost a full day. I mean, at least half a day. 
he was yeah. still there. Okay. So, good point. Yeah, I don't think it'll be enough to make a difference in the tournament or anything like that. But you know, you never know. They might use that. Yeah, there is still a role they could go down though. So. Now, what did you guys think of Freeze's transformation in this episode? It was pretty. He went golden Frieza. It was epic. It, it, I mean, the way they did it in the resurrection of uh, Frieza arc, you know, or the movie especially, was still very epic and very well done. But that being said, for, especially for the Dragon Ball Super Enemy, which is rushed, they did a really good top-notch job really making that oh, transformation yeah. epic again. I was like, wow, they really drew it out well. Like, I, I thought the way they presented it, the way they created all the effects and everything, and especially the camera angles and, and, and how they showed it over the whole world and everything, it, it felt like a, a traditional, like, Dragon Ball Z-style transformation. Yeah, yeah, it really did. So, and especially doing it in such short notice, in a week's time, I, I thought they did a brilliant job. And you know how sometimes, you know, Sometimes Dragon Ball Super's uh, animation is a little skittish sometimes. This was actually really good. The preview looks amazing, too. Mm-hmm. You were going to say something, Russell. What were you about to say? Um, I didn't have anything to do with Frieza. Oh. It was just another point of the episode. One of the coolest moments of the episode, I thought, was when Android 17 met Piccolo. Oh, yeah! <laughs> Epic! Yeah. Dude, you know that they're going to have to do a sparring session later. If they do not spar later on and have some sort of friendly final showdown, I'm going to sue. <laughs> oh, I know, right? <laughs> like, We're coming after you, Tori. Exactly. They met, and he was like, oh, uh, so have you gotten stronger like I have? Then Piccolo just smirked at him. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, they shake hands. They're like, hey, nice to have you on the team, man. And he's like, well, yeah, likewise. So I, they, have, they have that respect for each other. They have to have respect for each other. After that fight that they had, it was one of the greatest fights in Dragon Ball. Yeah. <laughs> we always go back to that. It's one of the best. No. And I think... I think Oh, sorry. Oh, well, I was just about to say that um, you also have to think about this, too. While, uh, while Piccolo was definitely trying his hardest to take 17 out, he was also using a little bit of a stalling tactic, you know, whenever he fought 17, too. You know, he was trying to conserve some of his energy and draw at the time because he thought he was going to have to face the rest of the androids, too. So, that being said, what would happen if they just sparred serious and Piccolo didn't have anything else to worry about because I mean due to the scaling that we've seen recently it's obvious that 17 is world above Piccolo power wise but if Piccolo could you know he's so good in his techniques he's so good with his new things that he can do now like he can shoot key blasts from his you know from his separated limbs now his regeneration in his multi-form is so much better his special beam cannon is better everything about him is so much better whereas to be honest, I don't really see 17 improving his technique that much. Just it's mainly power. power. Yeah. So, even though, you know, Piccolo, we know ain't no slouch. You know, he's probably getting close to somewhere like where, you know, somewhere close, you know, like halfway in between Buhan and the Super Saiyan God Red when he fought Beerus. Um, he's somewhere at least like that. So with all that technique that and all that training Piccolo's been doing, how would that fare? Power versus technique. That would be such an epic battle. That would be. It gives, also, you've got to consider um, Piccolo is very smart, and he is a much better strategist than Android 17. Like, Piccolo's strategy and just his, his brain, his smarts, like, he's got a big-ass head for a reason. It's because he's got a big-ass brain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love that part in the Kai series where Seventeen's like, you know, I really don't want to kill you, but if you're ready to tell me where Goku is, I'm all ears. No offense. <laughs> no, I'm like, yeah. oh, that's just epic. <laughs> <laughs> you know, also now too, what if they were to spar? You know, Piccolo, while he heard rumors, he didn't. He wasn't exactly sure about whether they had. Uh, unlimited supply of energy. He knows he has an unlimited supply of energy now, so he knows that a long drawn out battle wouldn't help him. You know? Also the fact that 
you know, 17 might already know this due to compu the computers, you know, in Jero's system. Maybe he doesn't remember anymore since he isn't connected to it anymore. But he might not even know that Piccolo can regenerate. He might not. What if, you know, 17 was able to speed blitz the fuck out of him and chop his arm off, you know, even accidentally or something like that? Or Piccolo could even fool him into chopping off his arm. And then, you know, 17 would be like, okay, it's over, I'm clearly better. And, you know, P Piccolo's arm that's separated charges up and blasts the fuck out of 17 from behind. And he starts to take advantage of the fight after that at, as soon as he regenerates. That would be so cool. Yeah. <laughs> I have to, I have to, I, I have to go with Piccolo, okay, uh, <laughs> and it's it's because of his superior strategic mind and all his techniques that he's been honing over the years and getting better at and more phenomenal at. <laughs> and and granted, seventeen, he's he's an incredible fighter. You fight, uh, you fanboying a little bit, Spike. <laughs> well, hey, you know, I gotta go. I gotta give it to Piccolo. No, I know what you mean, man. I'm just saying. Hey, son. He's an OG, man. He's been through the mud. He's been through the dirt and fucking... He's dealt with some pretty ruthless fuckers during, <laughs> you know, his time, son. And, 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 you know, he wasn't like some of these punk asses that are getting soft out here. Like, he continually trains. Even though he's doing a lot of this meditational focusing energy shit, like, he's still training. Like, he didn't yeah. stop. And he even got the best of Android 17 with his strategies when they fought the first time. Like, remember when he did the Hell Zone Grenade? And Android yep. 17, he had Android 17 thing, and he was just dodging all of his attacks. Come to find out that, like, he was supposed to dodge him. Like, he was just setting up for the Hell Zone Grenade, and he didn't see that coming. Like, Piccolo, he's, he's good with his strategy. He, he's got Android 17 and, forward, and, and, but... And especially after he takes off his hat and his, and his cape. Oh, it's a done deal, son. <laughs> Well, I, 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 I still don't know if I haven't beaten. I don't know if I haven't beaten seventeen currently. Yeah, to be to be honest, Spike, I'm gonna have to agree with Russell on this one. Uh, it would, it would I, I think seventeen is just way too, way, way too strong. It'd be something else if seventeen didn't have unlimited stamina. But seventeen can be at full power all the time, defense always on, and he'll never get tired. What's I? I don't. It just, I don't think technique can make up for that kind of power deficit when he can keep it on all the time. There's not going to be any off guard moments for seventeen like there would be for Goku. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, I still, I still have to go with Pickle. Yeah, no, you know, I, I respect I really that opinion. I don't blame you. I'd love. Pick I don't think he would, but believe me, I would love. I would love for you to be right, Spike. I agree with Russell, but I would love for you to be right. <laughs> it would be so and, epic. And I, I agree with both of you that I, I think that it's probably a greater possibility that Android 17 would win. But, you know, at the same... So, I mean, I would say 60-40 that probably Android 17 would win. But at the same time, I still believe that Piccolo has a damn good chance. But... You know, it, 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 it's different. To, it, it, it's hard to say be depending on the whole Cell Games and, and that era compared to now, you know. So, I think maybe he could if, like, he did that same multi-form special bean cannon trick he did on Frost. I think yeah. he could maybe with that. That would be epic. So, I mean, I, my final thought on that is, is I think it would be damn close. And I think it would be really, really, really worth watching. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, that would be a scene to go down for the ages again. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then another yeah. thing I wanted to talk about real quick, if you guys are cool with, is one of the spoilers that we got now, maybe this is, maybe this is confirmed, maybe this is not confirmed, but coming up in episode 98, the universes are going to be divided. Now, in everything that you heard, Andrew, uh, was that confirmed, or was that another one of those things where it's not going to happen? That one is the one that's up in the air. We don't know. Because um, I honestly feel like that part, probably more than anything, will take place. I think, I think it will, too. I but I don't think they're going to be on two different sides. I mean, I... <sighs> 
I mean, I don't know. That's a hard one to crack. That's honestly just one I'm just going to be like, I'll wait. You know? I actually prefer waiting. Like, he, you call me all the time. I, like, every time you find out something about these new episodes and you tell me. And, like, part of me is like, oh, that's cool. I can't wait. But then the other part of me is like, well, man, like, I kind of wish it was a surprise because it would have been better. Uh, uh, oh, no, I, I want to I wanna know every spoiler, the chance, yeah. every moment I can get. <laughs> Thank you. See, you're right there on that level with me, Sosa. Like, yeah. anything, you, any little crumb about what's coming to Dragon Ball, <laughs> I want to fucking know it right now. Yes, agreed. <laughs> Especially because some of the spoilers it's I can like rub in people's like, faces. It, 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 it's like knowing what you're getting before Christmas. Like, you, you want to know. Like, you want to know what Grandma got me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think um, I usually just did a Dragon Ball and Walking Dead uh, 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 thing in one. <laughs> that was all. That was pretty good. Yeah. Uh, but especially if they, if they break into two teams, which, who knows, maybe it might be like Universe 11 and their clown punk ass, and, and especially like them, Universe 4, Universe 9, and maybe one or two more universes, but th this is the reason I bring all this up, is I honestly think that the Saiyans from Universe 6 are going to team up with Universe 7. Yeah. I hope so. That'd be cool. I guess so. I mean, I honestly just don't see how it could work, though. How are you going to separate between the universes unless you, like, okay, this half is defeated now. Now we're breaking y'all up into half again, and now y'all face this half. Nah, that just doesn't seem like a good, the good way to do it. The Royal Rumble. The exactly. Royal Rumble. I, I, I have to think that it's just everybody yeah. free-for-alling, you know? Exactly. That's what, that's what I want to see. I don't want there to be a division. I don't want it to be, oh, everybody against, you know, Universe 7 or blah, blah. Like, you could have, like, during the tournament, like, you have certain universes, like, team up and try to eliminate the stronger ones, just like they do in the Royal Rumble, where you get all the small guys against the one big guy to eliminate them, and then fight against themselves. But at the end of the day, I want it to be every man for himself. And Agreed. only one universe will win. Agreed. And, and, I, and I agree with you 100%, Russell. And I, that's, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm horrible at communicating myself sometimes. Sometimes I... I like, when I say things, it doesn't quite match up what I have in my head, so uh, let me allow myself to retry it again. But what I think is we're going to see, like, a growth, a evolution of this whole battle. And I think, like, that's generally how it's going to start. It's kind of like this divided thing. But as the battle rages on, it's going. you're, you're going to see... You know, alliances. You're going to see people turning on each other, just like you were saying about the Royal Rumble. Oh, yeah. And that, that was more or less what I was trying to say, is that I, I think it, the, this whole tournament of power is going to start off in either one direction or one way, and by the end, it's going to be something completely different. Yeah. You know there could be div I agree. I see what you're saying, that there could be divisions during the yeah. tournament, but there's not going to be an official division like, yeah. as made part of the rules or anything like that. It could just be people temporarily aligning themselves against other universes. Which yeah, will I, happen. It's inevitable. It'll happen. So. Now, uh, one more thing I wanted to bring up before we move on to our what is that. Um, one of the, the spoilers that we got earlier this week that I don't know if it's been confirmed or not, but the fact that when somebody gets knocked out of the ring, that they become, like, instantly, like, vaporized. Like, they're, you're instantly extinguished from existence. You're, like, you're, you're erased from space and time, meaning that you don't even get a chance at the afterlife. You're literally gone, like, when Beerus Hakai oh, did. Oh, damn, son. Wow. Yeah. Okay. They ain't playing around. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Okay, makes sense. Yeah. That's oh, a now, confirmed spoiler. Okay, okay, good. Because now that that's been confirmed, here's my thoughts on that, okay? I honestly think that we're going to see some of our old favorites, our old people like, like Tien and Krillin and possibly Master Roshi. I think we're going to see the end of them in this tournament. Roshi? I think it's possible. Now, I mean, maybe not so much Roshi because he's been there. He's an OG. He's an OOG. 
Yeah. But, but I'm, I'm thinking maybe like Tien, Krillin, you know, like some of these guys, some of the lower level guys. And I feel, now, keep in mind, this is just a feeling, but 90, 90 to 95% of the time, my feelings tend to be right about these things. But I have a feeling like this tournament is really going to segue us into what I call the new era of Dragon Ball. And I feel like a lot of like these low-level guys are going to get wiped off the map. Now, what do you guys think about that? I think uh, oh, yeah. that bringing them back is beyond Shenron, but it may not be beyond uh, Super Set Shenron. That's All my right. response on it. That's a good idea. I didn't think about that. To be honest, Spike, I, I don't agree with that at all. I, I just don't see that happening. I think all the characters who are on this team are way too, OG, uh, uh, way too much OGs for them to ever get, be gotten rid of. They would have a cow. Now it's possible maybe they'll do a plot, you know, to resurrect them, and maybe they'll do it like that. But permanently, I can't see yeah. that happening. I, I yeah, that was more or less what I was trying to say. Is like. And in in other words, Toriyama would do this for a shock factor to see how people would feel about these characters in order to create that reaction so people are like, Oh, what are you doing? Get rid of Quillen! And then he's like, oh yeah, just wait till after the tournament. We're going to get the Super Dragon Balls together and bring them back. To be perfectly honest, if, any, if they were going to do that with anybody, I think Toriyama would do it to someone with a higher power and if they, if he was to do that to anybody in the Universe Seven team, I honestly think he would do it to Seventeen. That's I that's, think that's exactly what I was thinking. And then this is where the Frieza twist can come in because they won the tournament, but everybody else wants to wish Android Seventeen back to life. Frieza wants to wish himself back to life. So what do you do? Now you got a fight on your hands. Well, Frieza made it very clear that he's not interested in the Super Dragon Balls. He only wants the Earth Dragon Balls to wish him back to life. Oh, okay, yeah, that's true, too. I forgot about the Earth Dragon Balls. <laughs> but if any, but if 17, while he's super powerful, he's never been important to the plot ever again. That being said, you know, he does have a connection on Earth to his family, but we haven't seen them, so it would be just enough to cause a super big reaction, but not upset too many fans. I think 17 would be the perfect candidate for that, if, if he was to do that. You know, because we've already seen 17 sacrifice, think about sacrificing himself with the alien, you know, in the, in the vacuum of space to make sure that, you know, the animals made it back to Earth and he left them in the care of Goku to make sure they all got back. And he sacrificed himself for that alien. It actually kind of makes a good prelude that he would do that again, sacrifice himself in some huge move to be able to sac to save his sister and the rest of the team, nope. or or or, uh, or Krillin. Yeah, that's true. Who died saving Krillin? Right. I mean, so if like, you think about the GT theory, what awkward as that reunion was, and how they kind of like don't like each other, but they do, but they don't like. But Seventeen would do that just for his sister, you know, and yeah. it would be a great kind of contrast from the GT series, you know. Exactly. So, good point. If, if that was to happen, that's my view on who would happen. But I don't think they can get rid of OGs like Roshi or Tien or Krillin. I just don't think they can do it. Well, I, I, I just merely think that, like, Toriyama would do it as for a shock fact. You know how Tor Toriyama is, son? He likes to do shit where he tugs at your emotions, and then while you're all up in a frenzy, oh, psych, bring back with the Dragon Balls. Or we'll bring back with the Super Dragon Balls. Or some shit like that. Some quick fix. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, I get you. So, it, it, you know what I'm saying? We thought, Remember when we thought Krillin was dead and everybody was like, Oh, no, Krillin! Ah! Everybody lost their fucking minds and then what happened at the end of the saga? We all knew yeah, he was going to get resurrected. Hey, come on. Come on, man. We all... See what I'm saying? We all knew that, though. There wasn't any surprise or any wonder about whether he's going to be resurrected back. We just knew, we knew it was a matter of time. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I don't know about you, but when I originally first watched Dragon Ball Z for the first time, now keep in mind, I didn't know anything about the Boo Saga, the Cell Saga, or anything like that. I was fucking flying blind. Oh, so. uh, okay. <laughs> but I remember when, when Krillin died, I was like, oh, shit, son, Krillin's gone, son. He ain't coming back. He's done, though. Like, everybody on Nambic, you're all fucking done. 
Like, it's just going to be Goku and Gohan and Piccolo and that's it. So uh, when they wished everybody back, I was pretty, I was pretty, you know, I, I was like, what? Like, you know, it was a big shock to me. Yeah, no, I get you. Keep in mind, I, I keep in mind, I was still like really, 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 really new to Dragon Ball. Nah, I get you. Uh, so we'll see. It'll be yeah. interesting to see what they do. Exactly. The only thing, like, uh, I'm, I'm curious about the C2 is in the preview. It looked like, uh, you know, God Destruction Nine. Uh, what's his name again? I forget. Cedra. Cedra. Yeah, that's a good name. Yeah. Uh, it's hard to remember though. Uh, C- so much info to keep up with now. Even I have a hard time. Um, yeah, no, right. Cedra, it looked like, you know, you never know how the previews are actually going to work out, but it looks like Cedra, like, kind of maybe warps through space and time and fires that giant purple key blast that, you know, Goku or, you know, or Frieza or any of those guys. Like, y'all seen that preview, right? Where he, it looks like he's charging up that key blast and he just, like, opens up this portal to kill Frieza with. That'd be so cool to see kind of a little Frieza versus Cedra thing going on. Oh, my God. Yeah. That'd be epic. Or maybe Hell Cedra yeah. kills, kills the guy, the assassins who failed, you know, to assassinate Frieza so he doesn't isn't found out by Zeno, you know. Who knows? <laughs> exactly. And especially that conversation they had, you know. Cedra's over here like, yeah, you know, we could get caught by Zeno. He could find out about this plot. And Catella's like, nah, son, I got this. Well, Caesar's yeah, always been apprehensive. The, That's the meaning of his character. Exactly. So, it'll be interesting to see what this Hakai blast, what this thing does, if it hits him, if it doesn't hit him, if it's a close call. Like, well, what? It'll be interesting to see what develops. Yes, sir. In the next episode. And just to see Frieza kick out. That's going to be in. Have you know, Goku yeah. team up with them. It's going to be epic. <laughs> exactly. And especially seeing... Like, Goku can't do shit about this, son. Like, he's like, nah, like, I ain't even gonna try to stop Frieza. Like, we just need to take out these, these assassins and get, get to the battle arena, seriously. Yeah, I mean, uh, Goku's seen fighting with them in the preview, so. Hell yeah. Now, are you guys ready for some what is that? Yes, sir. stories of the day. Let's do it. Always. Hell yeah. And here's our first story. The... <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> uh, the... Oh, shit. Oh, damn story. Story ain't being long. Oh. Fastest grave diggers crowned in Europe. Like, they have competitions for this? Apparently. Wow. Fastest grave diggers, is that what you said? Yeah, apparently they have a uh, fastest grave digger competition in Europe. Oh, fastest! I thought you said acid. Yeah. I was like, "What are you talking about?" <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, nah. I was like, "Did it harden over time uh, or something?" Nah, nah. And I'm like, "What?" Okay, I get it. Fastest grave diggers. Yeah, got it. Uh, this craziness is coming to us from. Well, it doesn't really have a spot, but it just has multiple teams, multiple uh, countries. So, story goes like this. Ten teams com- uh, competed head-to-head Thursday in a race to name the fastest grave digger. The Associated Press reports teams from Slovakia, Poland, and Hungary competed in the event, which was designed as a promotion for the funeral industry. Okay. Why does it? Why, hold on. Why does the funeral industry need promotion? Like they're, they're the <laughs> one business that will never go out of business, no matter what. <laughs> uh, you know, like that's the logical explanation. Like you'd think to yourself logically, like why would you do this? Like nobody's just gonna kill themselves just because. Like wow. That funeral business, man, they're doing really good. Uh, I think I need to go there and then, like, just kill themselves. <laughs> like, uh, maybe, maybe there's a lot of people doing their own, like, part-time uh, funeral services or doing their own, like, uh, like, hey, I ain't paying these funeral homes to burn my uh, 
my uh, my relatives, I'll just do it my damn self. <laughs> you know, who knows? Uh, <laughs> or people just have no lives. <laughs> have an happy bonfire. Uh, I, 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 I can see the commercial for that. Are you tired of burning your own relatives and handling their funeral services all on your own? Call us! <laughs> We'll do top-notch cremation services for your family members at a discounted rate. Call us now, and uh, we'll make sure that your loved ones rest in peace. <laughs> wow. They'll go down to the guest world book of records. I know, right? <laughs> They'll be remembered. <laughs> exactly. They will never be forgotten. <laughs> Teams used shovels and picks to dig a grave that was 5 feet deep, 6.5 feet long, and 3 feet wide, according to the AP. Speed and accuracy were factored into the victory. A Slovakian team from Peter Pastorak's funeral service was crowned the winner. Oh, yay. Well, you know, I figure we're talking about the tournament of power. We're talking about competitions with teams. I figure uh, this would be right up our alley, you know. Yeah, sure. I see the connection. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that'd be a race from time and space. This works out perfectly. Yeah, you know, racing, uh, racing, dig up graves, racing to uh, survive in a, in a you know, uh, uh, a battle of no, space like, and time. Just, just, just stop. <laughs> <laughs> You're tripping over your own words like your mouth is falling down yeah, a, a staircase. Yeah, I'm, reaching, I'm reaching here, son. I'm reaching. <laughs> I'm reaching from the stars. Woody, man. Pull your string. Reach for the sky. Anyways. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that brings us to our next story. KFC offers chicken scented sunscreen. Wow, what? KFC is really branching out here because uh, we've, we've heard about the KFC nail polish, we've heard about the KFC romance novels, now we got KFC uh, whatever the hell this is. <laughs> Sunscreen. <laughs> sunscreen. Chicken scented sunscreen. Chicken yeah. scented sunscreen. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do you, uh, do you uh, like black we, men? Do you want to get one easy? Get our, try our, our new chicken scented sunscreen. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you like the most racist commercial. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but it's, it's true. Come on now. <laughs> so, I didn't invent the stereotype. <laughs> You can't go swimming. Hey, it's, it's just not. It's hey, it's not just black people love chicken. I love fried chicken just as much as any uh as anybody. Yeah, I love fried chicken too, man. We all go tanning. Go tanning and attract your man at the same time. But you know who else <laughs> might like fried chicken? Everybody. Sharks. Exactly. <laughs> Sharks. <laughs> You know, like, but, uh, you know, in all honesty, even though the stereotype of the black man, in all honesty, it would really show how non-racist the USA is because every dude would be on that woman like, you know, you know, flies on shit as, <laughs> like, so eloquently put. <laughs> exactly. That's, that's not the... Do you want your man to eat the booty like groceries? <laughs> Put some uh, chicken scented sunscreen on your ass. <laughs> Bro. Why are you looking at me, sir? No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> don't taste I like swear to God, she, she put on the she put on the lotion. She was asking for it. Oh no. <laughs> It puts the lotion on the skin or it gets the hose again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh that was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't run. I couldn't run. <laughs> it rubs the chicken on its skin or else it gets the hose again. <laughs> it does this whenever it's cold. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Oh my god! Uh, but but 
so KFC is really stepping up its game, son. Like, they're really branching out to all sorts of crazy avenues. And today we are crowning KFC is the craziest company in the entire world. It's a crazy yeah, fast food they're... company. I don't know if they're the craziest company, but they're definitely the craziest fast food company. Y'all are going to hate yep. me for probably for saying this, but I actually prefer ch churches over KFC, believe it or not. Uh, I, I go for that Chick-fil-A. Oh, exactly. I agree with you. Okay. That Chick-fil-A is winning. I, I get you. I get you there, too. Like, but, man, that fried chicken be messing with my stomach, though. It's so good, and it's worth it. But, man, it be messing with me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I literally, like, a block from my house, I have a church's chicken, like, right Oh, you house. lucky dog. <laughs> oh, I know, right? <laughs> I've never had church's like, chicken. It's, it's, Dude, it's good. What? I've never what? had it. And it's cheap. Seriously? It's cheap. Hey, hey, listen, listen, Spike. You came down here and I introduced you to Chick-fil-A for the first time. So when I come down there, you're going to have to introduce me to churches, okay? Or when I come hey, all we got to do is like, walk a, a block from my house. Like, literally, it's right there at the corner. You know where uh, that White Castle is? Uh, yeah. Yeah, you know right down the street from my house, right there on the corner of, uh, what is it, 11 Mile and 693? Yeah. Yeah, it's right there at the White House. It's or not White House, White <laughs> Castle. Yeah, the White, White House is moved to Detroit. <laughs> <laughs> it's right there. Hey, it, the place looks like oh, the White House, except the, it's Castle. Let's be honest. <laughs> if you move the capital over to Detroit, the scenery and people wouldn't be that much different. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's so fucked up. I'm sorry. I couldn't help it. Hey, hey, at least it's the truth. Hey, you know, yeah, it is the truth. I'm sorry, but everyone thinks about it. everyone thinks of the Capitol, <laughs> the White House, as some white, as some white ass, you know, neighborhood. No, no, you, you don't know until you go there. Dang. You just don't know. <laughs> hey, there's a reason they got a fence around that motherfucker. <laughs> Oh, no, Spike, that was far racist than anything I said. Come on, now. Oh, 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 hey, hey, hey. Come on, now. Everybody knows that if, they, if, they, if anybody who lives in the White House, anybody who's the president, you're going to have to put up like, a, like 10, 12, 14 foot fence around that motherfucker because everybody and their brothers don't want to take you out. No, you're right. I'm just saying, let's not go further because you, you're pushing, you're, you're at the limit now. We can't go any further than that. <laughs> Well, we have to behave now. <laughs> yes, yes, probably, yeah. probably, probably, right. I wasn't trying to... No, no, you just go to towards the line. You're looking, you're flirting with it. You're just right over there like, Hi, I see y'all over there. Let's just, we should be careful. <laughs> <laughs> Is this an electric fence? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're so fucked up, dude. Oh, oh, that's, oh man. <laughs> Let me give it a little touch. Just, just a little listen, bit. Listen, listen. <laughs> I think maybe, um, I wonder if you can fry chicken on an electric fence. Like, ooh, uh, <laughs> cook well. <laughs> like, I've, all, I've heard stories of people, like, frying bacon on bug zappers. Like, <laughs> oh, shit, son, that's a good idea. Maybe I should try it. Um, <laughs> Hey, hey, anyways, back, uh, back to the story. We're getting distracted. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we do. It is entertaining for everyone else. Uh, yeah, yeah, we just go yeah, off on of random tangents about nothing. Yeah, it is funny, though. That's when you know yeah, we're having exactly. a good time and a good podcast, when we can just link each other, yeah. laugh our asses off, literally. <laughs> everyone else will, too. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> The fast food chain KFC sold 3,000 tubes of chicken fed <laughs> sunscreen Monday. Wow. As a, do you want to do you want to guess what the main race behind all those you know product sales were? Uh, I'm guessing uh, white people because I, I don't think I've ever seen a black guy use sunscreen. <laughs> Just being honest, like white people, if white people don't wear sunscreen, like we start looking like a tomato. Yeah. Okay, but, like, I never seen a black guy with that problem. Like, I never seen a black dude get sunburned before. I was just I was imagining a bunch of black women trying to attract, you know, other black men with it. So that's what I was thinking. You know, some light black women or something. <laughs> Listen, the big difference between white people and black people is this, okay? Oh, dear Lord. Here we go. Oh, here we go. 
<laughs> what? What? Our podcast will be shut down tomorrow, but go ahead and make your point. Okay, now lit, now lit. <laughs> hey. long, long ago, long ago. Oh, dear Lord. I even, oh, no. What? What? I didn't even say anything. Long, long ago long is long not the right way to start anything when it comes to racial issues. <laughs> like, now, you don't want to start any conversation ever. It's the difference between white and black people. Like, that's the worst way to start anything. And combined with long ago, that's just, no. No. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, uh, once upon a time, and a <laughs> 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 Oh, that's all we need is, you know, oh, they think slavery never existed. Them white, white supremacist motherfuckers. <laughs> okay, let let Okay. There's the point, okay? At one point in time, we all lived together, okay? There were no white people, there were no black people. We were just people, okay? And what happened was, a certain group of us, or a certain group of people, moved up north because food was scarce, and it's like, hey, son, like, uh, there ain't enough food for all of us to eat. So, hey, I'm going to go check out the north. Y'all can chill here. You know, some of you are going to go to the west. Some of y'all are going to go to the east. We're all going to move around because, hey, we got to eat. We got to build shit. And especially probably because people didn't want to share. So, you know, people spread out, okay? Now, everybody knows that depending on where you live on the globe, depending on where you live in the entire world, your body will adapt. We naturally adapt to our climate. And you'll naturally notice that people who live down south in, in what are called heavier climates, more warmer climates, their nostrils tend to uh, be a bit wider, whereas in people in the north tend to have skinnier noses. Now, why is that? Because our body has to adapt to this new climate. In the north, the air is thinner, so we don't need to have wider noses. So we got to have, like, thinner noses in order to breathe the more yeah. chilly, uh, thinner air. Okay. And then for those who live down south, they have wider noses because the the air is more dense and therefore it's warmer. So you don't need to have those super thin noses. Our bodies will naturally adapt to whatever climate we live. No, that's that's scientifically accurate. If you spend all you get the sun. People that spend back most of what I say up. People with, that spend with generations sun. in the sun will have darker skin. Because this, of the sun, people that spend generations in Norway, where it's ten feet of snow half the year, uh, they're going to have lighter skin because they have less exposure to the sun. And here's the, the the end state to my whole explanation. Okay, people who moved up north. Okay, if you notice, there are people who have diseases out there where, like, the darker parts of their skin start to fade and they start to to get lighter. Why? Because their body doesn't need that darker coating anymore. Because you don't need that protection from the sun because your body has adapted to the new, colder climate. I'm still waiting to see how KFC ties into this story you're telling. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, now, so, before I move forward, does everything I say, uh, have said, make sense to everybody? No, it's true. It made sense. You, you, there's, uh, you know... You're still you walking in danger, everybody. You did good. <laughs> well, I, you know, I base everything that I know of around science, you know, and you know, well, did you all hear about that one, that one new study, the most recent study that says that it, it had the whole African community up in an uproar about how that the first humans were not black. Oh, they had cows. I didn't hear really anything uh, about that. Oh yeah, the, 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 it was an official study too, and you know. You can, you know, say it's not real or it's wrong or anything, and I'm not saying it's right, but the most recent official big biological study has concluded that we were whiter skinned, like, you know, you I know like the Bible says. I always assume everyone's, I always assume we started off as black because they all, they all say life originates in Africa, and the climate there would lead you to believe that we'd have darker skin, so that's kind of what I assumed, and I assumed that you know, we all started off as that, but... Well, apparently this study had found remains, human remains that were 
thousands of years older than the ones found in Africa. They found it in Europe. So that's where they're kind of getting some of this knowledge from. And I don't really care either way. You know, yeah. in, my, in, in my mind, now, the way Spike outlined it, it's possible, too, that, they, that you can become lighter. But in my mind, maybe this is because I'm ignorant, but I think it's a lot harder for a human to get lighter than it is to get darker. You, the sun, whenever you get tan, literally changes your DNA. That's why skin cancer can become so, such a big problem, because it literally fucks with your DNA strand. That being said... You get a lot of sun. You're gonna be. You're gonna be. You're gonna be black soon. <laughs> and so, in my mind, I always thought we were white, and you know that um, we hung out in places with a lot of sun, and that's where the black people came from. That's what I always thought. But who, who knows? I don't know, and I don't really care. You know, we're all equal either way. You know, and no one deserves to be mistreated, whether the first was white or black. So. I, I had thought, you know, how, you know, skin, our skin, you know, getting burnt, you know, makes you darker and everything, but that it really doesn't freaking matter where we originated from, because we should all be treated equal, and we are equal anyway. So people who are concerned about what race was born first or not is just stupid. Well, it's, it's really trivial yeah. in, in the grand scheme of things. Right, but people make a big deal about it, you know. Yeah. Yeah. They probably always will. But in the future... Eventually, there won't be any white or black people or Asian people. It's all, we're going to intermix so much that it's all just going to be one race of people. Right. It's going to be that South Park episode where we all all the languages mix up into one weird dialect, and we're all this pan weird looking people. You know, yeah. <laughs> all the features and everything like that. That's how Egypt came to be. You know what I'm saying? Who knows? I mean, like the you know, you know like how they build the pyramids. I don't know. I I, I, I could go on. A, I could go on a whole three-hour rant. Yeah, I'm not start on the pyramids. We'll be here all night. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah don't get me started on that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, trans, let's okay. finish this KFC thing. So over 3,000 tubes of chicken scented sunscreen Monday as a promotion for the restaurant's extra crispy recipe. The SPF 30 lotion was sold on a special website over two hours Monday. We think it smells amazing, said KFC spokeswoman uh, Casey Mathis. The sunscreen seemed like a natural fit. I prefer the smell of real chicken because, you know, I can eat it. Yeah. <laughs> See, I don't like being deceived by these punk ass smelling imitation shits. Nah, nah, nah. Like, uh. I don't know what you're talking about because I'll eat, I'll eat that girl up who has the chicken scent on all day long. Oh, that's that my dinner. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to go to town. Hey, hey, you missed it the other night, hey, Andrew. We had this story, or we, we were talking about the fact that, like, Will had sent me this picture of these little chocolate booty holes. Like, uh, people are making... Oh, yeah. And I'm like, well, I damn. saw that. I'm, I'm like, damn, son. <laughs> That's not attractive. Not no. even the least. Not, not even a little bit. bit. No, not in the least. Like, damn. Like, and then, like, the caption on it was to get him to eat the booty like groceries, and I'm like, nah, son, nah, nah. I mean, I wouldn't go over that, but the funny thing is, is I know my girl would go for that. Like, that's, I'm like, oh, man. Hey, you know how these women are, son, you know? Fucking batshit crazy, all of them. Oh, uh, she's, she's, an, she's a wild homeschooled Aries that, you know, has been secluded from most of, you know, Civilization oh, for most of her oh, life, oh, just going crazy. Oh. Oh, <laughs> yeah, you can just imagine that combo. Oh, but I, but I love her though. Yeah, that, that. That's like a that's like a Jack in the Box waiting to happen, son. You remember when we were kids? No. You know, Jack in the Boxes, you just wind them up, wind them up, and then they pop out of the box. You know. For, you have no idea, man. <laughs> but she actually jumped out the box and landed still back to me, so I'm good. Hey, there you go. <laughs> Yeah. Now to wrap things up today, what have we learned, everyone? <laughs> KFC is a very uh, forward-thinking 
company. Hey, <laughs> KFC is trying to get you to eat every damn bit of their products. I'm just saying. <laughs> yes. Uh, That's some of that uh, genuine outside the box thinking right there. <laughs> literally outside. <laughs> Uh, yeah. We also learned to see it for real, literally outside, yeah. outside the box. Um, we all, we also learned that somewhere out there in Europe, there is literally a person who has a trophy for digging the most graves. Yeah, as sad as that is. Yeah, exactly. It's like that South Park episode with World of Warcraft. You have a Warcraft account? No, I have a life. Oh, dude. <laughs> They give a South Park analogy for everything. It's great. <laughs> oh, I really do. South Park is life, man. You have no idea. Like, like the first four seasons of South Park were fucking gold, man. Like, I still have them on DVD, man. The first four seasons were gold, and then I don't know what happened after that. Things it's just, still good. Things, I don't know what things, you're talking about. Things just got really, really weird. Like, you know that, you remember that human Sentai pod episode and Sentai pad, whatever? But that's based on a real movie, dude. I know, but still, like, that's just, uh, like, <laughs> damn, that's like, You think that movie's fucked up? You should have seen the sequel they did to that. Gate, oh, gave me nightmares forever. Oh, so fucked up, man. So graphic. Like, the weird thing was, is after I watched it, I actually watched that movie, and I was like, nah, I said, nah, nah. No, I think the first one didn't bother to watch. Nah, the second. yeah, dude, yeah, yeah. I had to see the second one. I just and I regret it so bad. Uh, I, I, it's one of those. Wish I had a neuralizer. Exactly. I need to like uh, uh my, you know, Men in Black, my eyes or my brain or something or I don't know. Just yeah. Not like forget that even happened. Seriously. Hey, but seriously though, like you gotta love the way that South Park, especially its last season, has done it. I don't know if y'all kept up with the last season, but it talks about all it focuses on is the is the feministic is the feminism outbreak. That's all it focuses on for almost an entire season about how women are basically trying to take over the world and how the internet is going to be the end of us all. Uh, and it, they do such a good job with it, bro. They really do. No, I have not you, seen it yet. I have to check it out. Yeah. You need to watch the last season, man. They, it starts out with the the most influential thing of all time last year, the Colin Kaepernick case. It starts out with that. Oh wow! You know, and they get they get uh, they get uh, what, what the the new uh, the new Star Wars uh, director guy to remake the national anthem so it doesn't offend anyone anymore. Oh boy! Oh boy! <laughs> um, and uh, and it basically just goes into reshaping what uh, reshaping uh, you know Amy Schumer and how feminism is taking over the USA, and it basically goes on this whole rant of how feminism is cancer, and it pretty much straight up calls it cancer and says that they're trying to take over the world and that they're going to use men as you know semen factories and to write jokes because yep. women aren't funny yep. and Amy Schumer is the reference. Yep. <laughs> That's all the women need us for is for steaming and for jokes because they aren't funny. Exactly. <laughs> I'm like, wow. <laughs> I'm like, wow, like, that's like, going pretty far. Yeah, that's, that's one of the things over the years about South Park is they've always, in their writing, their writing style, they're usually like dead on as to what's going on in the world. And you know the uh, MGTOW? You know, so basically how, it, and and it also kind of signifies kind of male pride at the same time. They they actually lead. They actually have butters. You like lead on kind of like the revolt against feminism. You know, and it gets really big in the USA. And the and the other big thing going on is internet trolls and how Sweden, you know, uses this program to be able to allow you to look up any internet troll that. Any any account on any service and find their address, phone number, all their information, oh, wow. so that everyone who's ever said anything against anyone on the internet is no longer has autonomy. You know, it, it, it's all out there for everyone to see. So you can't. So it's like a purge night. You know, when the program is released. So it, it and how all of America and the world basically comes crashing down because of this program. And it's just freaking epic. Oh, it really wow. is. They do such a good job with it. <laughs> Wow. 
Hell yeah. Y'all need to check it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Well, we want to yeah, take, this, it's awesome. uh, take this opportunity to thank our very special guest, our official fourth member of the What Is That Team, Andrew Sost, the Brick Wall Man. Yes, sir. Thanks for joining us again <laughs> on a wonderful, fun-filled podcast, bro. Yeah, this one was especially fun. I appreciate it. Yeah. Always good. Yeah. <laughs> Russell, shall we take our lead? I gotta make chili. Uh, I'm gonna go make a whole big ass pot of chili. So, so, so yeah, yeah. Let us take our lead. I can't afford some of that chicken lotion and let us know how it is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go and catch myself a black girl and roll some on my. Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> my girl won't mind. She'll she'll be into this. <laughs> she'll eat it. <laughs> she'll eat it off of me. She really will. She's like, wow, this is so good. If KFC really wants to step up the game, don't make that sunscreen edible. <laughs> my girl, my girl's thick. She'll eat anything. Hey, hey, hey. Watch out for, for watch out for the chunky gals out there. They're gonna be like chasing you down like like uh like they ain't had a meal in like, you know, uh twenty minutes. <laughs> <laughs> you better watch out, man. <laughs> We don't want to turn the fat acceptance SJWs against us, Spike. Come on now. <laughs> no, all you gotta, hey, all you gotta do is just hold a piece of chicken out in front of their face. <laughs> come on now, come on now. Chase the chicken. Come here, come here, girl, come, come here. Come on, chase the chicken. Come on. <laughs> I've got some chicken lotion from KFC for you. I'll even throw in a little. Be a good girl now. Uh, I'll even throw in a little Debbie oh. cake for you if you're good. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm going to hell. I'm going to hell. I'm sorry. If it's against, if it's against the feminists, no, you're going to heaven, man. I just, I, I don't know. I just think I took it too far. I'm sorry. I, I apologize. No, you didn't. No, no. You think, no. Oh, you don't, you don't think I did? Okay, good. Right. No, not with feminists. You can do that all you want. No, I think I just defended everyone with that one, but, uh, oh, well, okay. Uh, not me, you're <laughs> like, <laughs> Well, it's like, missing off the feminists is kind of like your stick, so. Yeah, yeah, you're right, son. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> it's kind of your thing. It's like an ongoing joke uh, on this podcast. It's yeah. like a whole segment. It's like, missing off the feminists. They're the ongoing joke. We just read it off the newspapers <laughs> and, you know, I mean... <sighs> And, and, and I know, like, like, hey, I get it. I, I piss them off a lot, but you know, uh, every once in a while, you know, uh, not like it isn't deserved. Yeah, good point. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. I love. I love the stand-up comedian Lewis Black. If y'all haven't yeah, checked yeah, him out, he's yeah. awesome. Because uh, I love what he says about George W. Bush. He's like, oh, what? Uh, he, he's talking about George Bush. He's no longer president. He's just like he certainly did make my life easy. All I had to do was walk out on stage, read whatever he said that day, and be on my merry way. <laughs> what am I going to do now that he isn't president? <laughs> oh, the feminism kind of works the same way. Yeah, exactly. What's the newest article that they published today? Mm. Oh, well, we have a podcast. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Russell, <laughs> shall we take a...